In honor of Black History Month 2022, the Black Faculty Task Force and Ethnic Studies Department of Delta College proudly present the Sankofa series. This is session 10, Kuumba, the creative power of Black artists. Kuumba means creativity. It is a Swahili word that is a principle of the Nguzo Saba or the seven principles of Kwanzaa. The phrase is to do always as much as we can in the way that we can in order to leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than we inherited it. This presentation will highlight the kuumba of several black artists from the late 1800s to the civil rights movement. As you view the art, be sure to reflect on the prompts and pause the video if needed for dialogue. Our first artist highlight is Harriet Powers, who was born into slavery in 1837. She began creating her quilts after emancipation, and they stand today as a phenomenal relic of her faith and life. Harriet's Bible quilt was created around 1886 and represents various biblical stories, for example, Cain and Abel and the Last Supper, Adam and Eve. What other biblical references might you identify? In her next quilt of the same theme, we see even more biblical examples. It's amazing to note the quality and endurance of this 130-year-old quilt. In a closer view of the Adam and Eve panel, we see the snake, Adam holding the rib, and God's all-seeing eye and merciful hand. In another panel, we see a depiction of an actual event that happened in 1833, in which falling stars made people fear that the end of the world was near. And you can see the falling stars represented in the appliques that she created. Our next artist is Robert Duncanson, the first African-American to gain international recognition for his mid-19th century paintings. Duncanson was born as a free individual in Ohio. He developed his self-taught talent with the support of abolitionists, becoming the first black artist to have work exhibited overseas. Duncanson's art often centered the sweeping landscapes of pre-Civil War and antebellum America. This piece shows the ever-present possibility of freedom just across the river from slave state Kentucky to the freedom of Ohio. Duncanson's picturesque landscapes asserted his equal right as an African American to the new nation's natural bounty. as if he was intentionally hiding messages within his artwork. His depictions of Roman ruins in Italy serve as a warning that all slaveholding societies eventually will meet a tragic end. His travels to Scotland inspired this warm and glowing piece, which you can almost feel the emanating heat from the sun. Land of the Lotus Eaters, 1860-1861. Landscape with Rainbow. Clementine Hunter also represented America in the latter 19th and early 20th centuries. She spent over 70 years as a sharecropper on the Melrose Plantation in Louisiana and encapsulated her experiences through her vivid and bright and bold paintings. The images in her pictures depict the non-stop work of the plantation that center around the ever-present economy of cotton. Numerous paintings center the all-important black church with its activities and traditions as a main part of life. 
Augusta Savage was an amazing sculptor and was regarded as the leading African-American artist in history during the Harlem Renaissance of the 1920s. Augusta began her career by crafting barnyard animals out of mud in her Florida home as a young girl. Her talent flourished upon moving to New York in the 1920s, where she became known as not only a sculptor, but an educator and a powerful leader. Her figures captured the subtle expression and sentiment of black children and adults alike. Perhaps Augusta's most famous piece is the 16 foot tall sculpture named The Harp, which she was commissioned to create for the 1939 World's Fair. Augusta Savage's work represents not only examples of vulnerability and pain, but also of black joy and pride. The photographer James Van Der Zee began his career in Massachusetts at the age of 14. As one of the first black folk in town to own a camera, he began documenting his community and people. James moved to New York in 1916 and established the Guarantee Photo Studio in Harlem, where he became the most successful and popular photographer in town. It was in Harlem that he captured leaders such as the Honorable Marcus Garvey, the dancer Bill Bojangles Robinson, and the poet County Cullen. His photography captured the sophistication, elegance, wealth, and stature of a new Black America. As well as the playfulness and joy of its youth. The undeniable beauty and class of black women and men shine through in every shot. Beautiful Bride, 1930. Girl with Dog, 1920. And Untitled, 1931. Aaron Douglas, born in 1899 in Topeka, Kansas, began his career as a high school art teacher before he moved to New York during the Harlem Renaissance. His work was inspired by Egyptian art and African sculpture, and he's best known for his murals, book, and magazine illustrations as seen in the NAACP's The Crisis. He went on to establish the art department at the HBCU Fisk University. His piece, Aspects of Negro Life, reflects a collage of the black experience from slavery to freedom. His works from 1934 include The Negro in African Setting, Into Bondage, and Song of the Towers. Palmer Hayden was a painter known for his scenes of both New York urban life and the rural South. He captured black life in unsuspecting and candid moments. His Midsummer Night in Harlem of 1936 reflects the vibrancy, joy, music, heat, and proud community on the stoops of a New York City street. Palmer's self-proclaimed protest painting depicts the life of a black artist sharing his work and home space in his humble pursuit of art. Beale Street Blues, 1943 and Blues Singer. The Subway, 1930 and Christmas, 1939. 
Lois Maylou Jones grew up in Boston, Massachusetts, where she studied art. She was inspired and encouraged by other artists in Martha's Vineyard before she established an art department at Palmer Memorial Institute, a black preparatory school. She joined the faculty at HBCU Howard University in 1930. Her art reflects a strong African influence and also incorporates French tradition and style as Jones frequently traveled to Paris to escape the racial prejudice and stress of America. Note the brilliant color, patterns, masks, and statues of African culture. Our final artist highlight is Archibald Motley, the first African-American to have his own art exhibit in New York City. The grandson of an East African survivor of slavery, Motley grew up in a racially tolerant area of Chicago's South Side. The influence of black music and culture is vibrantly displayed through Motley's work. He intentionally captured positive and upscale images of black folks to counter the negative stereotypes of poverty and degradation. As a man of mixed ethnicity, Motley also highlighted the beauty, diversity, and complexity of black skin tones as shown in nightlife. Getting Religion 1948 Black Belt 1934 and Saturday Night 1935 The image the first 100 years he amongst you who is without sin shall cast the first stone. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. 1963, 1972, captures the evil, terror, darkness, and contradictions of American life during the height of the civil rights movement. As you view and analyze this final piece in our session today, Ask yourself how many juxtapositions might you identify in the various images within the painting? What details highlight the terror, pain, and violence of the civil rights time period? What emotion is invoked by the images in this painting? And in what ways do we still need to carry on the fight in 2022? As we conclude this session of our Sankofa series, we ask what themes are identified through the works of all of the artists combined and how do these themes reflect the collective stories and experiences of African American history? As always, we thank you for viewing this session of the Sankofa series. May peace be with you and yours eternally.